Kanban has some key metrics that it likes to utilize to understand how those tasks are flowing. You can visually see the tasks flow from the to do, doing, done, and, and watch them. You can easily see bottlenecks, but metrics help to also give a bigger picture as to how is everything flowing and is there areas of improvement and areas of adjustment that can help everything move a little bit smoother, a little bit faster. So some of the key metrics that are common in Kanban are lead time and cycle time. These are pretty much prevalent in every single Kanban through all organizations. Now there's a lot of other metrics that could be measured. These are the two that we're gonna hammer on because of their popularity and some of the kind of common nature in which they're utilized. Lead time is all about the full time from the time that task was created and put into that to-do column, so that initial date, till the date that it was completed. So as it moved through the to-do column to the doing column to the done column, how long was that? Cycle time is a little bit shorter. This is from the time it was picked up until the time it was completed. So at, for the cycle time, we don't care about how much time from the time it was created and put in the to-do until it was moved to the doing. Instead, we're only looking at from the time it was a doing to the time it was marked in progress until the time it was completed, and that's called cycle time. So as you can see in our example here, let's say that our task was created, nine days later it was put into the doing column, the work was started, and then five days later after that, it was moved to the done column. Well, the lead time, the full lead time is 14 days. That's the time it was from creation to completion. Cycle time in this case would be five days. That would be the time from in progress until done. So just remember, lead time, the full time of that work item cycle time, how long it takes for us to cycle through an in progress to get it to complete. Now these metrics are really important because they can help to identify areas of, of issue. So if you're having too many items that are work in progress, your cycle times are gonna be crazy. You're gonna have really long cycle times for a lot of different tasks. It's gonna show that you're not really focusing on one particular item, you have too many items in progress. Maybe that's because you like to start and not finish, which is a, a bad thing. You wanna make sure you're finishing as much as you can. Maybe it's because you keep hitting roadblocks or you're waiting for a certain resource to be available to help you. And so you have to kind of table that one as an in progress item and grab another one to start working on. Well, it's good for that to be identified so they can get another resource to help out or free up that resource a little bit more so the cycle time for the overall work items isn't quite as long. So these metrics are really important to track and to take advantage of any adjustments that can be done to improve your overall processes.